Namaste, beloved. This is Mother Wisdom, and this is the promised second part of the video. Um, solar eclipse, um, blood and soil revelation. So, um, beloved, I, I want to just get right into it. Um, and so, we closed off on um, the different cards um, that came came about from the um, the Isis Oracle deck, and we had pulled um, these cards: Mother of Life, Nourishment of the Golden Grain Mother. We had pulled into the chamber of healing, and I spoke to you about um, the blue lotus, the blue lily, and those two columns. Um, the last card that we, that I said I would do this particular video um, on because there wasn't enough time for the other one. This is this card, beloved. And I hope you can see it. And I ask that you pay attention to the Wajit. That's the snake on top of his Horace's head. I want you to pay attention to the eyes. I want you to pay attention to how they are one mother and son, Isis and Horus. I want you to pay attention to the knot and how his belt is girded around his loins. I want you to pay attention to all of that, the stardust at her neck. There's a lot here, beloved. There's a lot of symbolism here, um, down to the color of her lips. Nothing is coincidence in this card. Um, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to hopefully, um, I'm looking at, it's, it seems dark, but it's actually like still like maybe 3.30 or something. So um, I don't know why it's so dark. Maybe it's the, this is a new computer with a new camera. So it could just be the settings. Um, so I may just have to play with them for a little bit just to see how things are um, going and, and, and play with the um, the presentation of it and, and how it kind of, you know, appears. But let's keep moving forward, beloved. And I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get the book for this and I'm going to go right into it and this is going to be a kind of a um, a deep a deep reading and I'm going to ground myself in one moment um, as I come to this again um, page 80 um, the cards yesterday were 7, 8, and 9. No, 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, and 10. And this is the card that was number 8. And it's found on page 80. And it's called Initiation. And beloved, this is a very deep card and it has very deep meaning for the time period that we're in. Um, this video is the second part of... Um, the solar eclipse um, new moon video for um, August of 2017. So here we go, beloved. And as I am compelled, um, I will be breaking in and stopping um, the reading and then continuing. So here we go. Initiation, spiritual testing of Ra and the Lady Isis. 
when you are being spiritually initiated into the mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of deep challenge. They, the key is to find the light within the challenge, the learning, growth, or wisdom that can be summoned to learn the challenge, can turn the challenge into an opportunity for healing. Now, beloveds, like I said, this is the second video that I did, the first one, and it was over an hour and something um, just disappeared. That's Mercury retrograde. Um, just a lot of things right now. But it is what it is, beloved, and you're getting what um, you're supposed to get. But I really want you to understand what you're getting, that the mystery of life is, is understanding that there are moments of great challenge, deep challenge that are going to activate and initiate certain things within our DNA, within our, our being, within our essence, to move us to make choices, to make decisions, to, to gain greater wisdom, to grow. And it is, it is with these opportunities and challenges that we are actually, mm, what can I say? We have no other choice but to engage and, and to be present. And that is why we go through so many different things. And we most of the time call these things to us. We agreed upon all of them before conception. So, beloveds, there's a lot going on and we as beings, as human beings, as spiritual beings, have forgotten why we go through this and we think that it's, it's a normal thing that this is a, a conscious, this is what life is. And it's not, we've forgotten that suffering is not life. Suffering is a symptom that you need to adapt, that something is out of order, that you need to realign yourself. Let us learn from my suffering. Let us not have to keep suffering and going and going in this re repetitive cycle of not knowing who we are, not knowing the connection that we have to everything and every everyone. This is the challenge right now in this moment in this age and we've we've got to rise beloved we've got to start looking at it and understanding what we need to do that it's not just about a nine to five and a life that's that's dedicated to debt and survival with no actual living loving and being in the manner of abundant bliss, the way we were designed to enjoy life. Okay, let me keep going. Let me keep it going, going forward. Um, when you are being spiritually initiated into the mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of deep challenge. The key is, and it's written they, it's a typo there, so I keep wanting to say, keep reading they key, but it's the key, is to find the light within the challenge, the learning, growth, or wisdom that can be summoned to turn the challenge into an opportunity for healing. 
whilst the scorching heat of Ra seeks to burn through any resistance. The Lady Isis, with compassion and cleverness, will protect you from burning and instead enable you to be nourished and grow from the light of Ra. Let Isis help you pass the test of intense growth as you thrive with new life. Now, beloveds, and, and this just brought it back to me. You have to give me a little bit. My I'm achy today, <laughs> so I'm adjusting. Um, when I did this in the other video, what came to mind for me as soon as I had spoken that and, and was reading it, I was seeing, um, like I said, my earliest um, spiritual tradition um, was Jehovah's Witness. So that was Christian, Judaic-based Christianity. Um, and in that, what came to mind for me in, in reading this, uh, um, whilst the scorching heat of Ra seeks to burn through any resistance, the Lady Isis with compassion and cleverness will protect you from burning and instead enable you to be nourished and grow from the light of Ra. Do you see? And I was taken back to um, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they were all thrown into this furnace, this furnace that was so hot, it even killed the guards that tried to put them in there. Okay, that's how hot the heat was coming from there. And it was so hot, and they were in there walking around, and Nebuchadnezzar was looking down in there, and he said, I saw four of you down in there, not just three. And when they came out, you know, they would not, they were put in there because they would not renounce their spirituality. They would not reject their, their, the love of their, the wisdom, their spiritual wisdom, their spiritual mama. Okay, they, they would not say she was a lie. They would not deny her. And that's why they were put in this, this furnace. And what I just read, you have to understand what these wings and everything are what this mantle mantling is with wings what it symbolizes and beloveds this is we nothing is new and you need to understand that this King James English Bible is based on the Coptic scriptures Coptic is Egyptian. The Egyptians got them from Mesopotamia. Okay? So you have to understand the history of something in order to really have it broken down for you. Okay? For it to really, you to see the context and to really understand everything that you're getting. See the words. They can be switched up and meaning can be changed and etymology can be, you know, what it is and vowels can be invented and added to them. Okay? So, beloveds, what I really want you to get from this is that the images, the symbols, That wisdom is there and is there in the old oldest stories and is there and explained in the oldest of the artistic and creative expressions of that culture those are keys to the wisdom so right now we're getting fire from Ra Rise the sun. Let it burn you. 
and ISIS got you. So I hope you are connecting the dots with this, beloved. Because what is being said is we're getting ready to enter into a heated phase in human history. Okay? I hope you're getting all of this the way, you know, mama is giving it to me. So let me keep let me keep going um, with this. And and I'm gonna just say say it again, I'm being told to say it again. Whilst the scorching heat of Ra seeks, it seeks. There's a reason it seeks to burn through any resistance. And that resistance is your resistance to being your highest self, to shining as brightly as you can. That's that duality that's in there. That will, that was from the other two cards. Like I said, this is the second part of this video. So if you really want to be caught up, you have to go see the first one. Okay. Whilst the scorching heat of Ra seeks to burn through any resistance, the Lady Isis with compassion and cleverness will protect you from burning. With compassion and cleverness. So look for the compassion and the cleverness of the mother when you find yourself in situations. Look for signs and symbols of her compassion. Okay? Look for those. Look for them. You've got to know what they are. This is a part of knowing yourself, knowing your inheritance, knowing your divine being. Cleverness. Cleverness. You have to be discerning in order to be clever. You cannot just have knowledge. You've got to know how to apply it. You've got to know how to see wisdom in layers where you may not even think it is. Like that lotus flower. That comes up from the muck. That is a seed within the seed. That the ancestors saw God inside of it. And when it opened up in the morning and gave it this meaning and significance. Because it was as though the flower itself was worshipping the sun. Think about it. Okay. Let me move on. Let Isis help you pass the test of intense growth as you thrive with new life. For advanced aspirants on the path, initiation will occur at various stages. Sometimes your entire life will feel like an initiation. At other times, specific areas will be flowing easily whilst others are deeply challenging. Hear what is being given to you, beloved. This is a gift from the mama. Hear it. Receive it. Receive it. Because like I say, Mercury Retrograde was in work yesterday. I, I did all of this yesterday. And everything that went forth into that is, is in another dimension right now. Okay, and I guess that's where it needed to be, but here we go, here we go, here we go, going with the flow, okay, going with the flow, not being upset that it's gone, just, just going with the flow. Sometimes your entire life will feel like an initiation, the things that you go through. Everything, one after another, beloved. Go with the flow. 
no matter how think of think of like I said my basis was Christian I thought of Job okay Job was the original scriptures called him the greatest oriental he was the greatest oriental understand why he was called that okay it was his mind heart set nobody could tell him to cuss God nobody could tell him to question God he knew his relationship with spirit he identified himself and the world that he lived in by the universal laws that existed he stayed fast to that no matter what came at him because he knew bottom line is what mama gives, mama can take away, and mama can give again. It's her will. And we don't have the wisdom to fathom that or question it. So, beloveds, like I said, there's, there, there's, there's so much here. Okay, let me get to it. This oracle comes as confirmation that you are not needlessly suffering. If you can find the light within the struggles, tests, or challenges that face you now, you will experience breakthrough healing. Receive it. Receive it, beloved. How many of you pray and ask for revelations, for insight? for blessings, for, for just the wisdom. And here it is. Here it is. They ain't cost you nothing but some time and your attention. Okay? Find the light within the struggles. And baby, the light is the spirit. It's mama's spirit. Mama's energy. Whatever struggle you're going through, what is she trying to teach you? What do you need to learn about you and your spirit and your spiritual will? This oracle comes as confirmation that you are not needlessly suffering. If you can find the light within the struggles, tests, or challenges that face you now, you will experience breakthrough healing. Breakthrough healing. That's healing that happens in the blink of an eye. Something that you may have been working on your whole life, 40 years, all of a sudden, boom, you got breakthrough healing because you now have connected some dots that you were not able to see and recognize before. Or that they were right there, but you didn't know how to, how to come at them from the angles to connect them. Or you did not even see that they could be connected. This is what this, this means, beloved. This is what is going on. So allow yourself the patience. Allow yourself the mistakes. Allow what you see and even know that, yes, there is going to be some serious suffering going on. But this suffering... We are so hard-headed and stiff-necked that this is the way that we tell ourselves that we have to learn. That if it's not kicking our ass and if we're not bleeding from it, we, we, we're, our, it doesn't stick to us consciously. That we have to get to the point of being so worn down, so broke down, and so tired that then, you know, we will allow and we will surrender 
to a higher will than ours. Other than that, we fight it. We fight it, we fight it, we fight it. And we've been fighting it for so long that stuff goes on right in front of us and we allow it. And don't say nothing and don't check it and don't question it. And, and we waiting on everybody else and somebody else. Just like this um, stuff that's going on in Charleston, Virginia. Um, and with Donald Trump, who is President of the United States, and who is, who has not clarified the racial situation between groups that would fight for hatred and groups that would fight for equality and freedom. Beloved, we have come a long way, but we have also got a long way to go and that's what we're seeing. You know, that's what we're seeing. And you have to realize that some of these people have never faced this kind of reality of themselves, of what is truly the truth about their nature, okay? There is a patience that has to take place. Notice I said patience. And there's a level of tolerance, okay? And, and that level of tolerance is going to be individual, okay? Because not everybody can stand, you know, the things that are getting ready to take place and that have been taking place. And that's why we have the outbreaks of what I want to call denial and detachment, where we're not seeing the whole picture. We're just seeing it from kaleidoscope colored pieces of glass through spectrums and angles. You know, we're not seeing that we're killing each other. We're not seeing that Black Lives Matter at all, they always have. We're not seeing that Black on Black crime hate happens. We're not seeing the domestic violence. We're not seeing the way our children are losing their spiritual identity and inheritances. There's a lot going on, beloved. We have come full circle, so to speak, and we have come to a point where we know we will not go backwards. Oh, there ain't no going backwards. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. There's only going forward. And in going forward, you have to let go of many of the old belief systems and weight systems and things that were in place. You have to realize those things no longer apply that you no longer are even the same type of human being that existed thousands of years ago. That there are indigos and rainbows and crystals here with different frequencies. You 
that these beings and their parents and the energy and the things that they're doing is causing all kind of changes. And those changes were seeded that way by design. And once you know these things, where does suffering fit in? Why is there an acceptance to it? Like I said, we, we, we've come a, lot, a long way, but we've got a long way to go, beloved. One of the things, too, that I wanted to um, talk about with this was um, the Donald Trump thing and how one day all of Mama Angela said it the best. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Believe them. What sickens me is how easy that was thrown back in the closet. And how we're told, ain't nothing in that closet. Don't, don't look in there. Ain't nothing in that closet. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's just a skeleton. That, that you know, that's, that ain't nothing in the closet. Mm -mm, nothing. Y'all act like something new happened. Some, it's new to you. It's new to the consciousness of the sleeping, I'll put it that way, is new to the consciousness of the sleeping, that somebody in office could feel that way about other ethnicities. This man has not changed his stripes or his stars or his color. Okay, he is who he is, and he has always been, and who he will always be, because that's his choice. He knows no other way to be. But I want to say this. So many of us have endured have memories, have stories, have images imprinted into our mind, our hearts, our souls, and our spirit of our ancestors walking through the heat and the, of the disdain for our cultures, for the color of our skin, for our spiritual connection. I am Black Chickamauga Cherokee Creek and Mexican Indian. So I'm speaking from across the board, okay? And I don't say one had it better than the other. I don't do that. All my ancestors speak to me. I witness all the pain, all the past, all the suffering. And I'm going to tell you, hate is hate. No matter if it comes from this tribe or that tribe. No matter what color skin that tribe got, hate is hate. Taking life is taking life. Thinking somebody else is less than is thinking that somebody else is less than. We act like it's new. It ain't new. 
It ain't new. We have been living with the consequences of strain fruit growing on magnolia trees. Okay, it that's not a shock to us. It's a shock to you. You act like oh, this. This has been happening since the civil rights. If it, none of this had been going on since the civil rights, why is there? a manifested spiritual movement with the three words, Black Lives Matter. There's a lot to understand. But we are coming out of exile, whether you like it or not, because the planets have a line, and it's time. It's time for us to remember who we are. It's time for us to be the caretakers of this earth, to be older brother and sister to care for our younger sibling. Okay, let me move on. It is the almost unbearable solar fire of Ra that can cleanse the soul of wounds the love, compassion, and intelligence of Isis that can temper the heat of Ra and stop it from burning and that drying you out, or else you wouldn't be left with nothing but emptiness, anger, bitterness, and despair in your heart. These are not meant to be the outcome of life's challenges. Rather than losing love and hope through the challenges of life, the initiate understands all aspects of life are gross opportunities in various states of disguise, waiting to be discovered. So what we are resisting is evolution. Be clear on where you allow your thoughts to dwell and on what they are allowed to dwell. Understand what you are resisting. Understand what you are standing for. Please, don't just hop on the bandwagon and because there's a catchphrase, you find yourself marching for something that you think is one thing and it's something else. Know yourselves, beloved. Know yourselves and be careful. Be careful and be aware. Okay. And understand what this means. Okay, soul wounds. The sun can rock and heal soul wounds. So this, these are soul wounds that are coming to the light to be healed. Okay, grasp it, beloved. See it, see it, see it. You know this. Like I said, this, this, the solar eclipse has passed. Today is the 22nd of August, and like I said yesterday, yesterday was amazing for me in that the energy of it, 
my my sleeping patterns are off. So, you know, if I if I'm seeming kind of jumping from here and there and not finishing and did it, understand what it is, beloveds, but get what's there for you. Okay? Stop looking for the faults and the flaws and receive what you receive. And I've got to stop looking for the faults and the flaws and just continue on. Because sometimes we put our foot in our own mouth. Okay. I'm going to read this again because, again, beloved, this is very powerful. And to understand this new moon, to understand the solar eclipse, to understand the energy that is coming, to understand the earth changes from the solar flares and everything else that is getting ready to happen, you're being told. You know, I, I, the vessel is being used. Attune yourself to the energy flow, to the wisdom, to the unconditional love by being prepared, by getting your mind ready for what's coming. It is the almost unbearable solar fire of Ra that can cleanse the soul of womb, the love, compassion, and intelligence of Isis that can temper the heat of Ra and stop it from burning and drying you out, or else you will be left withholding nothing but emptiness, anger, bitterness, and despair in your heart. These are not meant to be the outcomes of life's challenges. Rather than losing love and hope through the challenges of life, the initiate understands all aspects of life, our growth opportunities in various states of disguise, waiting to be discovered. As an initiate, this oracle urges you to honor life as a gift and treat any challenge or pressure as a way for you to grow into a brighter and purer light capable of great spiritual service on this planet. That spiritual service includes growing in an ability to be able to love freely and beyond limits to love with courage and faith and beloved you know i'm gonna have to read that again because that is the whole reason for this video you know this in i see why this needed to be I said that in the last one too. I do see why this needed to have its own show, have its own time period, because this card, this this card is just so, and I I needed to get it for you. Um, it's just powerful, beloved. This card is just powerful, you know. And I want you, like I said, we just had a lunar eclipse. I want you to think of the eclipse on this. Who is eclipsing who? Who is solar and lunar and, and, and all of this? We just I want you to really think about it, okay? I want you to think about, okay? <laughs> I'm being told that the letter U, the letter U. In Eurisa, the 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 head thing, the Eurisis. Oh, beloved, you know what I'm talking about. Look for the Egyptian Eurisis. Um, I'm also being told that. Emerald, um, the emerald, 
tablets of thought. I'm, I'm getting that from this. I'm also the gold, the color, gold dust, the chemical makeup of it, everything, the understanding of what gold is, gold and, and being gold as the sun, and understanding that gold was actually used in tinctures and in medicines to heal. Um, it was also used by these God beings, these original beings, these sky beings, okay, that fell to the earth. It was used to heal them. It was used to also align them with the sun. They needed that gold to, to help them. It, it helped attune them. So, beloved, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot in this card. Do you see the dust by her shoulder right there? Um, that's where that came from. And again, um, the girded loin with the gold again. And her face is powdered like a powdered gold. His face is the golden hawk, falcon, golden, 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 golden. And then there is the letter U. See all those U's? Those are U's. That's where you came from. So there's something about the letter U, beloveds. And that letter in ancient times, in the most ancient of times. And that's funny because as soon as I said that, um, Ur, you are, came up. Um, Ur is where I believe um, Job and Abraham. And all of those, that's where they came from. The land of Ur. You are. That's kind of Chaldean. Um, but you are. The letter U. Um, also as a number. Um, uh, check the number of it. Check what is used for um, an alchemy. Check the letter use metaphysical and understand how and ironic that you stands for you. You know, you, 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 you. Okay. So, beloved, there's a lot, a lot here. Um, and I had never seen this before. Um, and I don't know if you can see it on here or not. It may just look like shading to you. But here, um, right where my, my finger is, that, like I said, it might just look like shading to you. Right there. It's like this grayish. My finger's rubbing right on top of it. Um, but in looking at that, um, there's a form and there's a figure there. And that has significance in this reading. And I'm being told that... Um, That'll be in the ritual and in the invocation. And I'm the Beck crocodile deity and man. Um, an ancient crocodile being. Okay, let, let us do the ritual, beloveds, because I'm told that's where that symbol and whatever will be explained. Mm. Rest quietly in a space where you will be not be disturbed and close your eyes. 
Become aware of a dark space within your heart that is peaceful and vast. Allow your awareness to travel within until you are aware of a light in the distance far, far away. Now, beloveds, I'm going to stop right quick because if, if you understand anything about um, totems or um, what is it called? Zoomorphs or anthropomorphs or anything like that, you, you understand that alligator crocodile is one of the oldest beings. He's the, rep, the reptilian being, so to speak. Um, they, and this, this is saying, you know, he, he resides under that water. And that this is the chest right by the heart where this symbol is. Um, okay, let, and let me just keep going, beloved, because that'll keep speaking to me and, and it'll be what it is. <laughs> okay. Become aware of a quiet, dark space within your heart that is peaceful and vast. Allow your awareness to travel within until you are aware of a light in the distance far, far away. Travel towards that light and become aware of a great sun shining so powerfully that if you kept traveling towards it, it would surely incinerate you. Despite the great sun's intensity, you feel drawn to its light and power, and you sense a divine presence within it, ancient and powerful. Suddenly you feel a sweet coolness, like a breeze fanning over you. You sense the wings of the Lady Isis around you. And and just let me go back. Again, beloveds, this is a the second video. In the first video, this card is explained and this was the third card pulled and I read them in that backwards order but I want you to see this nail down here and I want you to understand that it's that snail is speaking of patience patient it's also saying watch and be aware of how you are protected by the wings of Isis to the sun shining just like that snail you know and beloved the card was reversed when it was pulled so it looks like this with the ankh down and with the wings notice the wings okay downward this way and notice them like this. And Mama says there's great wisdom in that. Okay. Suddenly you feel a sweet coolness like a breeze fanning over you. You sense the wings of Lady Isis around you, offering you protection and assistance. Feel her loving gaze and the protective cool barrier she creates between you and the powerful energy of the great sun using her wings. And I'm gonna stop for a minute because that just brought me back to that piece. Um, not that piece, but um, that portion of of the show that I did yesterday that got um, thrown away and that was um, the movie um, I think it's New Earth something Earth with Will Smith and Jaden Smith and um, Jaden Smith was like so many of our little indigo babies nowadays and he had taken off and 
he was told he had to come back and that he couldn't do something. And he decided to take it upon himself that he was going to do it anyway and he didn't care about the outcome and he just took that leap of faith, that leap of faith in himself, that leap of faith in himself. Okay? And it everything lined up. A, a mama vulture came and he was flying in this suit, you know, but she, she got him and she had him and he was there to stop the lions, the felines, okay, from hurting her babies that were in the nest. All of her babies were killed by the by the felines. Okay, understand this this Leo gate and this New Earth movie, and understand what is is very prophetic, very prophetic, um, very spiritual. The vulture, the symbols, the symbolism the fear of the ghosting, um, the inheritances, the self-doubt, the not good enough, and the pushing of ourselves to the extreme. Nothing, beloved, is coincidence, okay? It is co-created. And it is the will that it be recalled, when it is recalled and when it is manifested. And beloved, it's up to us to gain the knowledge and know who we are as divine children to be able to latch on and to get fed. Somebody can put that titty in front of your face all day. And if you don't know how to latch on, guess what? You're going to be a hungry little something. Okay, you're going to be hungry, angry, little something, because you don't know how to latch on to right, what's right there in front of you. And the mama can be trying to help you, and everybody else can be trying to help you, but if you're so mad, and you're so angry, and you're so frustrated, and nobody is doing nothing right, and you can't even... Do you see how that anxiety and that stress will take you to a whole different frequency than the comfort of being latched on and being fed. There's so much for those. Let me keep going. Um, and I, that just, I, I missed where I was going with that, but It'll come back if it's, if it's supposed to. Um, let me see. Ah, the, the movies. Will Smith. Watch the movies, beloved. Watch it with a... Educate me mind. Instead of an entertain me mind. Look at it. The signs and the symbols. Look at it from a metaphysical point of view. Look at it from a spiritual other reality dimension kind of way. Understand what you're seeing. Understand the coded languages and the coded images that are shown to you. They're there for a reason. Start seeing, start understanding. Things, so many things are right in our faces. Just like I was saying, you know, so so many things are right in our faces. This man, one, one minute we seem like they're getting it, and the next minute it's, it's right back. Put the skeleton back in the closet. We know it's in there, just leave it in there and it'll be okay. You can't be dragging it out and parading it in front of people. Let 
me tell you something about your skeleton. We about to take it out the closet and beat you with it, okay? Something else is about to reborn, be reborn from that old energy. It's about to be realigned. We about to give it a tune-up to the next phase, to the next reality, to the next dimension. Okay? And if you ain't ready for that, you know what you can do. Let me keep it moving. She holds out a large sacred golden plate before you. Upon the sacred plate, you may place any struggle, question, issue, or concern that you are ready to surrender to the divine wisdom of the great central sun, knowing it has the power to consume and destroy any human issue with its great heat and nuclear power. Beloved, we, we have got to understand and, and we have got to get there, this healing chamber, understanding these blue lotuses and the carnelian. And I'm, I'm being told to beloveds that um those those blue those blue lotuses they have a um they have an effect like weed almost okay and i want you to understand that in powdered form and in all kinds of ways these flowers were burned and used oils and everything else was was used. This is what kept the ancestors in such a calm sense of knowing and being. Nothing is new. This age where marijuana is coming back into being legal again, hemp is being used in building again. Nothing is new under the sun, beloved. There's an age returning, an age of abundance, an age of self-knowledge, an age of self-love, an age of divine wisdom. It's, it's being reborn. And we're looking at the pains of it being born. No pain, no gain. Okay, let me finish, beloved. Oh, the golden plate. Upon the sacred plate, you place any struggle, question, issue, or concern that you are ready to surrender to the divine wisdom. <clears throat> that is the great sign, central sign. Beloved, that means stop holding on to things. Stop holding on to it thinking that you gonna fix it. It's not for you to fix. Okay? It, it's, it's not for you to fix. It's for you to surrender the need to fix it by believing in who you are, by knowing who you are, and by giving it to mama and saying, mama, your will, not mine. That's what that is. And so many of us, we we don't have a clue how to surrender. We're, and I'm, I'm the same, same 
same way. You know, I'm I'm so used to being in control and and having to know and see every aspect, every angle of something and not trusting nobody to see it out except for me. <laughs> you know, and and that's a lot of us are there. A lot of us are there. A lot of us won't say it, but a lot of us are there. And it takes practice on a daily basis to step back and release that 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 kind of control that you think you have. And and to keep reminding yourself of who mama is. Let mama have That's where we have to get to, beloved. And that comes with meditating and using, you know, staying in that sacred space of understanding your connection and who you are connected to. Okay? Let's move on. Using your mind, you easily place any issue, thought, feeling, or concern that you are ready to release now on that sacred plate. Just imagine or intend to let it fire out of your mind onto the plate held by the lady. And beloveds, what I saw when it was firing out of your mind, a dragon's breath, dragon's blow, just let all that hot negative, you know, issues, thoughts, feelings that you don't want to carry anymore, or you that are too painful for you, or that you don't haven't come to an answer, give it to mom. Let it go. And once you have sent all that you wish to release to the sacred plate, the lady Isis winks at you, takes the plate in one arm. I can just see her sashaying. And sashaying listen to me and sashaying. <sighs> takes the plate in one arm and then powerfully hurls it like a great golden discus right into the belly of the sun where it is gobbled up and burns away effortlessly. Feel the lightness of your being as this release is completed. So, beloved, give it to mama and let her dispose of it. And then you don't have to worry about you going crazy and, and, and hurting somebody and, and all of this or hurting yourself or, or any of this. Give it to mama and let mama, let mama deal with it. So no matter how hot and nuclear and whatever else you have created that ball of energy inside of you, give it to mama, deposit it on that plate and let her do what she going to do to it. Okay. Allow the Lady Isis to guide your awareness back to your body and your heart by feeling her carrying you on the breeze of her divine wings until your awareness fully enters in through the crown of your head and sits gently in your heart and then in your entire body. Hear her whisper blessings of peace and reassurance to you from deep within. When you are ready, just open your eyes. Incantation or of initiation. You can say this incantation to finish the ritual above or as an independent practice to assist you during times of intense initiation when you need help to stay true to your path because it is difficult not to believe that everything is just going wrong. Winged Mother protects me from the fiercest light, shelters me in cool sanctuary of her wings in flight, wraps me in safety of her compassion and peace. As with trust, the portal of initiation I reach. I pass through the portal with trust complete. I now successfully attain this peace. And that's, that's that card, beloved. And I am thankful. I'm very thankful. Now, 
I also pulled yesterday um, some cards from a deck that I've only used um, personally, and I believe with one other um, person. So I've only used this deck a couple of times. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the three cards that were pulled yesterday. Okay, there's a total of nine. But don't worry, beloveds. Well, there's a total of ten because I also have to read the heron. Um, but I'm going to start with the card that I got yesterday. And this is the kiwi. And I guess I should let you see. Um, this is the, the deck. And this is Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides Oracle Card from Stephen D. Farmer. And it's 44 cards. Okay. And like I said, the first card that we got was the Kiwi. And yesterday, these cards were pulled so randomly. Um, the deck was spread out and... Um, the cards kept jumping out. So these were the cards that jumped out, these three. And then today, the other cards, when I was doing something with this deck, they just demanded, just compelled, however you want to use it. It's page 65 for Kiwi. And it says, do a walking meditation each day for the next week. Most of the time, walking is a way that people get from point A to point B, often in a rush and without regard for what's going on around them. Meditation is typically viewed as something people do while sitting cross-legged for several minutes. However, that's only one form of meditation. Walking with awareness and intention is another. Find a place, in, preferably in nature, such as the forest or woods, where you can simply walk for 10 minutes or more each day for the next week. Experiment by walking more slowly than you usually do. Try moving at 80% of your usual speed. There go 80 again, beloved. You can also try speeding up your pace, by stay, but stay present and be aware of how it feels to move so rapidly. Then slow way down for a few steps to where you can really feel each step you take. Notice how the contact with the ground starts at your heel and slowly moves up to your toes. If possible, try it barefoot. Be aware of the sight, sounds, and smells as you walk, as well as the rhythmic feeling in your body. Whatever pace you set, be sure to breathe consciously and consistently with full awareness Doing so while walking is what makes it a meditation. Associations of the Kiwi. The Kiwi is associated with being grounded, nocturnal, survival, flexibility, fatherhood, innocence, earthiness, ancient wisdom, inspiration, safety, speed, quickness, and detection. And that was the Kiwi. And I believe the Kiwi um, originates in Australia. I don't know if it can be found anywhere else. Um, the next card was Mouse. It's Mouse. You're overlooking some important details, so pay closer attention to what's going on. This is very powerful. Um, in everything that's going on right now from this date forward. <laughs> that sounds so contrived, but beloveds. 
pay attention to the details of things because it's in the details where the answers are, where the truth lies. Um, let's see here, this was Mouse. Mouse is on page 77, which is a 14, which is also a 5. Five is also the number of humanity. Okay. Here we go. Mouse. You're overlooking some important details, so pay closer attention to what's going on. Pay closer attention to other people's body language, how they move, their gestures, facial expressions, and general posture. And you know this is talking about Donald Trump. But it's also talking about everybody else, beloved. Those people who get in your face and lie to you with you in your face. Learn to look at those body, their body language. Learn when somebody can look you in the eye. Learn when they're fidgeting. Learn, learn if they got ticks. Observe, beloved. Observe. And and don't just observe with your physical senses. Observe with your, your instincts. Observe with how, with your gut. Observe with your third eye. Learn to observe. That's what Mouse is telling you. So, like I said, these cards are very on point. And, like I said, this is the second portion of the other video. So, you've got to listen to the other video in order to get all of what is meant for you. Okay. When you focus not only on what individuals are saying, but also on their body language, you'll find that you have considerably more information that you can use to understand what they're really communicating. For body language typically reveals far more about people than what they're verbally expressing. Sit back whenever there are people around and simply observe for a while. Look to see if what others say is congruent with their body language and watch for any discrepancies. In other words, don't always take people at their word. Also pay closer attention to agreement and contracts right now. Pay attention, beloved. This is divine wisdom. This is information that's coming to you through a vessel for a reason at this particular time. Okay. Can't say you, you, you didn't know. Take your time to completely understand any agreement. Finding out as much as you can by asking questions and consulting friends and experts to get their advice. Beloved, this is also um, what we need to be doing with this skeleton in the closet situation. Be careful, however, not to get bogged down in too much detail. Walk the fine line between scrutinizing a contract, verbal ones included, for an inordinate amount of time, thus remaining stuck in an indecisiveness due to your need to be 100% certain that you've covered everything and rushing into something impulsively and reflexively based on emotional appeal. It's very deep, beloved. That, that's, that wisdom, and, and I remember doing, saying this in another video because mama showed me the mouse and how that mouse will stay in that shadow and hidden and it will and be still. And the only thing that might move on it is its whiskers that feel the vibration in the air. And it's observing. And it is already mapping out what it can do and where it can run. That's because it has observed. 
that in that detail. Okay? That is what be aware of how to observe. You don't have to take in every single thing and get so detail oriented that you you can't see the forest for the trees. Okay? But be conscious. Look for spirit in things. Look for the nature of things. Look for the truth of things. The association with mouse is caution, secure, scrutiny, details, fertility, alertness, efficiency, thoughtfulness, determination, nitpicking, orderliness, fastidiousness, and abundance. And that was mouse. Okay. And the last one. Beloved, and I believe I did it, did it first. I'm not sure, but I know this one took me there. This is Weasel. Um, I hope you can see it. Weasel. Okay, and the weasel reminded me of Ricky Tiki Tavi um, and the understanding that Ricky Tiki Tavi would, Ricky Tiki Tavi isn't a wee, wee, a weasel, and I can't remember what exactly he is, the word for it, um, but um, they exist in India. Well, they exist in a lot of places. They fight snakes. And, you know, it, it's amazing the the dancing and the, the rearing and the observation, you know, the, the focus that this weasel has on, on this snake because it knows that snake will strike, you know. And so it's, it's got to feel and sense. Let me just read it because this this is a very deep one. Weasel. 129. 129. Um, and that is a what a 12. And that's a 3. Okay. There we go. Weasel. Be silent, pay attention, and simply observe with your eyes, ears, and physical feelings what is happening inside and all around you. Take a deep breath and release it slowly. Then take another and another. Continue to breathe steadily and slowly from your belly to your chest. Breathing this way will keep you attuned to what you feel in your body. And beloveds, it was in the other video too about breathing. So, beloveds, pay attention because the messages that are coming through is that there are going to be a lot of things that you're going to witness and bear witness to that are going to upset you. And you're going to need to learn how to ground yourself instantly and breathe and to refocus and redirect your energy. Um, and I guess that's why Mama has me doing this because you will see me, I'll, I'll have to pull myself back and I'll have to ground myself um, again. And that's just because that's how I am. A lot of other people may not need to ground themselves as much as I do, but I am so sensitive to there's so much always going on that I really have to ground myself um, to get the silence that I'm trying to get when I'm doing this. So, <clears throat> let me keep going, beloved. Take a deep breath and release it slowly. Then take another and another. Continue to breathe steadily and slowly from your belly to your chest. Breathing this way will keep you attuned to what you feel in your body. Notice the sensations without judging or trying to change them. 
Be aware of how your body responds to what you see, hear, and feel around you. Don't judge any of your experience as right or wrong. If you find what you're doing, that you're doing so, take another deep breath, release the judgments as you exhale, and return simply observing your experience inside and out. When you practice this way of observing, you're operating from pure awareness or the witness self, the self that radiates through and fills your being. It's the self that feels a deep connection with the world as a participant, while at the same time is centered in the observer. Operating this way for a while, for a few minutes each day becomes a meditation and will stimulate the realization of the unity of all life, with you serving as a direct conduit and expression of spirit. When you're connected to spirit, the natural world speaks to you, and you become sensitive to the energies of the earth. Awareness without meditation or judgment, centered in your heart and your soul, allows you to know your authentic self without attaching concepts about who you are, pure you. Alacrity, observation, wittiness, foresight, scrutiny, stealth, intelligence, discernment, watchfulness, forethought, silence, grace, friendliness, and discretion. All of those are associated with the, um, the weasel. Um, and yesterday, as you can see the backs of these cards, like I said, um, I have not used these decks that much, this deck that much, um, but I was told to do so yesterday. And, beloveds, there's just so much there. There's just so much there. Um, with this blue heron. And, and let me just go ahead and read it because it is, it's just so, so powerful. Make a stand for what you believe in and do what feels right in spite of any judgment or disapproval from others. So, beloved, I, I really hope you're getting, getting this because... It's right on time. It's right on time. Trust your deep sense of knowing what the right what the right action is and do it. And don't rely on others to tell you what to do or how to act. Not everyone will approve of the decisions you make. And if your choice goes against the grain of what people expect from you, you'll no doubt run into strong criticism and judgment. Stand still. Look around you and breathe. You're doing just fine in spite of others' assessments of you. Besides, your greatest and most fulfilling support will come from that place inside that guides you by revealing signs that tell you what path to follow. Heeding these signs helps your soul be in alignment with spirit's intent for you. You may have to get both feet in the water and wade through the dregs of other people's disapproval, asserting yourself where needed. Practical optimism and clarity of purpose will always dissipate any tendencies towards synchronism or self-pity. And beloved, that's so, that's so powerful. Because we all fight self-pity because it's been programmed into us. And one of the ways this is saying, that Blue Heron is saying to fight against that, is by practical optimism and clarity of purpose. When you know what your purpose is, you know what you're going up against and why. 24 7 365 you know stop taking things so personal it's not against you it's against mama 
It's not about your will. It's against the mama's will. So, like I said, stop taking everything so personal. Learn to put the accountability where it belongs. Learn to take the responsibility when the responsibility is yours. Step up. And this is this this particular um, card was also so telling us don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about them coming at you. Don't worry about having to defend yourself from them or your being right or your being wrong. Know what you know and stand on it and, and keep, moving, keep it moving. You don't have anything to prove to them. You're, they, they are not the authority that has judgment and can pronounce judgment over you. Quit giving them that ability. To the, you give them the right to do that. Okay, let me finish. Um, the association of the blue heroine is autonomy, dignity, self-determination, balance, gracefulness, peacefulness, resolve, uniqueness, illumination, independence, Boundaries, exploration, fluidity, self-reliance, dignity again. Dignity is on here twice, beloved. And deliberateness. Um, beloved, like I said, those were the cards that um, were presented yesterday. These are the additional cards that presented themselves today. Okay, they just leapt out the deck. Um, there's there's no particular order that um, they they came out in. So I'm I'm just going to give it to you. Um, I'll I'll let Mama give it to you how she wanna give it to you. And, and let that be that. <laughs> okay. Peacock. Okay. Let yourself stand out and be noticed. Peacock. Let yourself stand out and be noticed. 86. This is 14. Five again. Eighty six. Okay. Let yourself stand out and be noticed. It's time to step forward and stop hiding behind any of the facades that you've developed over the years. Although these personas have been highly adaptive and have helped you along the way, for which you can be grateful, there's more of you to express to the world and it's ready to emerge. Okay, I already call myself Legion, okay? And you mean tell me that there's some more? Okay, okay, oh, oh, I got it, okay. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Although these personas have been highly adaptive and have helped you along the way, for which you can be grateful there's more to you to express to the world, and it's ready to emerge. There's a certain safety and comfort in being inconspicuous and always staying in the background, yet in playing it safe in this way, others don't have the opportunity to get to know who you really are and you don't get to experience the richness and textures that are possible by participating more fully in life. 
By remaining in the background, you not only alienate yourself from others, but often end up allowing others to choose for you. Doing so can make you feel like a passive victim of life. I don't feel like a damn passive victim of life, but I do kind of. And I guess we all do. So, beloveds, I get I get what this is saying. And let me stop taking it so damn personal, like I just said. Okay? Um, Peacock. All the eyes. Wow. Wow. All the personality. All the eyes. All the way you see yourself. Wow. Stop hiding, huh? Okay. Being noticed does have some risks. People may criticize or judge you particularly if they're not used to you asserting yourself in such a way. Or you may judge yourself, which can be an even harsher sentence. These are the most likely risks, but they're actually very minimal. So shed any guilt or shame without coming out with who you are. Wear more colorful clothing, sing, dance, and let others know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. You can do so with grace, dignity, and enthusiasm, and you might even enjoy it. Yeah, and then some of them, my little legion personalities enjoy doing it with a certain crudeness, rudeness, sarcasm, and downright vulgarity. It's pushed to do so. Know yourself. Associations of this peacock card. Self-confidence, clairvoyance, sensitivity, healing, dignity, laughter, leadership, gracefulness, flamboyance, Colorfulness, cheerfulness, radiance, and attractiveness. That that card has its own energy. Um, wow. Okay. Huh. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the things you will notice is the blues and the greens and all of this. And blues and greens have always had a certain energy for me. Um. So, it is what it is. And the shirt I had on yesterday was of these colors. These exact colors. Okay. Boar. The pig. Page 19. Which is a 10. Which is a 1. Face your problems head on with confidence and courage and you will emerge victorious. What other di whatever difficulty you're experiencing now, whether with a relationship, career path, or some other concern, dig in and rummage around until you discover how to solve the problem, then take immediate action to remedy it. Every time you confront adverse situations in this way, you you will be uprooting those elements in your life that appear to be obstacles to fulfilling your purpose. Wow. And beloveds, understand why these were totems and understand why the ancients used these symbols and symbolism. Understand the energy of these beings and the lessons that they taught and that they still teach. Life can sometimes be very uncooperative with your rational mind sense of order and will at times even block your demand of how events or experiences should unfold. If you're living on earth, you're going to get your feet muddy sometimes, but it's no cause for panic, crisis, or drama. Instead, take a couple of deep breaths and view whatever problem you encounter as simply something that needs to be taken care of as the saying goes, there really are no problems, only creative possibilities. Once you've emerged victorious, which means that you've either conquered your problem or changed your thinking about how you initially perceived the situation, 
you'll experience a surge of power and confidence. Remember that your power originates from source, expressed through you and as you. When you vanquish the illusion of this situation being a problem, you'll not only feel a greater sense of relief and freedom, but you also open the way for your heart, mind, and soul to be more in alignment with the will of spirit. When you operate with, from that perspective, you can overcome anything. Association, courage, hospitality, earthiness, self-reliance, protection, prosperity, organization, fierceness, uprooting, cleanliness, determination, balance, security, and tenacity. And beloveds, that was that boar card. Okay. The next one is the Meriki. Okay. Let me find it. Meriki. Merkit is on page 72, which is a 9. Get support from a trusted group of like-minded friends. Wow. Mm -hmm. The people in your life would love to offer their support to you. Your only job is to receive it and indeed sometimes even ask for it. Those whom you feel closest to and trust the most are the individuals you can rely on to be there for you, especially when you really need it. People who are dealing with dire illnesses have the support of friends and family. Members usually fare the best. However, you certainly don't need to, need to experience such an extreme situation to take advantage of the love and care that others have to offer. Write down a list of names of people you trust the most and then go back through it and identify three traits in each of these individuals that make you trust them. When you finish, you'll not only have a good idea of the qualities in those you rely on, but also a clear notion of the characteristics that make a person trustworthy in your eyes. My list is so small. Sure, you've been burned or disappointed at one time or another when you've trusted someone and were let down or betrayed, Everyone has experienced this, so now you may be afraid that if you let others in and count on them for support, something similar will happen. Those memories, consciously or subconsciously, will not only filter out any chance of being disappointed or hurt, but will also serve to keep others who are trustworthy at a distance. Yes, 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 yes I know. Look under that filter and listen to what your gut instincts tell you about a particular individual. How do they match up with the list of characteristics you find trustworthy? Take a chance and let yourself receive love and support. And beloveds, that is so hard. That is so hard, especially for highly sensitive and highly empathic people. Very hard to do. Very hard to do. Fully 100%. You know, it's, it's, you give yourself a degree. You give yourself in layers. But to release all of you 100% to someone, you know, it, that, that, that takes that takes a lot and there's not too many that that are worthy of the gift of yourself 100% to them so I guess what I want to I, I hear what this card is saying but I also say beware and only give 100% of yourself to someone who's 
you're receiving 100% from. Then you can exchange. Okay. Um, the next. Oh, did I read what? The Marikit is associated with family, community, group support, vigilance, observation, intelligence, energy conservation, communication, resilience, protectiveness, grooming, and playfulness. The next one, and we just have one more after this one, um, is the rattlesnake. Okay. Rattlesnake. Hold on. Call from wireless caller. I'll call them back. Okay, let's see. Um, that was rattlesnake and rattlesnake is page 99, which is 18, which is also a 9. Okay. Page 99. Rattlesnake. There we go. Okay. Um, the experience that you're presently going through are an initiation into fulfilling your purpose as a healer. The foundation for compassion is an awareness that suffering is a natural part of life. Whether, that is this ridiculous? Hang up, goodness, okay. The foundation for compassion is an awareness that suffering, okay, wait a minute, hello. Okay, rattlesnake. The experience that you're presently going through are an in initiation into fulfilling your purpose as a healer. And beloved, that last card we had that I did this whole show on was initiation. So this is in alignment. This is further in alignment with that. The foundation for compassion is an awareness that suffering, again the word suffering, is a natural part of life whether through the empathic appreciation of another being's pain or the experience of having suffered oneself, and which beings haven't at times felt the pain or sorrow that is an aspect of living on this planet. The deeper you go into the soul of another, the more you can feel what they feel, yet paradoxically, maintain a certain distance or objectivity. A true healer must heal from the heart, no matter what technological, logistical, physical, or shamanic tools they use. Did you hear that, beloved? From the heart. So if you are going to a doctor who does not operate from their heart, who is so negative and so toxic and poisoned to your recovery, to your health. Distance, just find someone who can speak to you and heal you from your heart. Because that person, that doctor, he's not the one for you. He, he's not the one for you because there, there's no heart connection to your healing. Okay? So, be aware, beloved. A true healer must heal from the heart. No matter the technological, logistical, physical, or shamanic tools they use, the experiences that you're going through now or have just completed are all a preparation for you to open your heart to the suffering around you and do your part in alleviating it you'll find that you're increasingly being asked to offer your time and energy to help heal others, including not only people, but also animals, plant beings, tree people, and also, and ultimately our Earth Mother. 
Some of this healing power will also go to mend the rifts that exist between races, ethnicities, and other species. You've noticed more and more how often your hands will spontaneously feel energized, experiencing it as heat or a tingling sensation. This is the power of spirit working through you. Allow it to guide you in whatever the focus of your healing is, whether simply placing a hand on the shoulder of a friend or more extensively and directly, directly involving yourself in another being's health. Association, initiation, healing, respect, transformation, resurrection, shedding, detachment, death, rebirth, sexuality, renewal, transmutation, clairsentience, agility, wisdom, creativity, primal energy. All of these are associated with rattlesnake. And beloved, it's 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 time. It's time. Um, and that's funny because when I think of Reiki energy, I, I think of it as this is rattlesnake. But I, I think of it in the lines of snake energy um, and that heat and that electricity. Okay, and the last card, beloved, is, is the girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> the next to last card is the gorilla. Okay, let me get there. Gorilla. Gorilla. La, 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 la. Page 55, which is 10. Gorilla, here we go. Take the time to listen compassionately to those you love, especially your family members. The bond between family members can gradually decay and become stultifying unless it's continually nourished with loving attention. And one of the simplest yet most elegant ways of showing that attention is to listen compassionately to those you care about the most. Otherwise, you risk taking them for granted, assuming they'll always be there and that they know you love them. Take time to have a conversation, starting with relatively superficial topics, then moving into more in-depth personal themes, adding your own tidbits, but primarily focusing on what the other person has to say. Show your spouse, partner, children, parents, or elders your love by listening and really hearing what they have to say about how they feel and what they think. This not only generates a deeper, more lasting affection between you and the other person, but far exceeds glibly saying I love you with no real feeling behind it. People are constantly changing and evolving, adding new experiences and insights. Who someone is today, while built on a foundation of a core self, changes and is continuously elaborating on that core self. Find the newness and the freshness in those you love, which includes both your biological and marital family, as well as your close friends whom you've informally adopted as family. Gorilla Association. Intelligence peacefulness, family, strength, nobility, generosity, gentleness, calmness, vegetarianism, loyalty, patience, dexterity, steadiness, scrutiny, and conversation. And the last card, beloveds, is the cardinal. Cardinal 24, which is a six. Okay. Here we go. 
The polarities of your spiritual pursuits and physical pleasures are out of balance. So do whatever is necessary to bring them back into equilibrium. When on the spiritual path, it's easy to idealize what being spiritual means. It can become a rigid mental imprint on which you judge every, anything that varies from your conceptualization of what being spiritual is supposed to be about. This includes not only another person's practices and beliefs, but your own. Falling short of this idealism leads to either assuming a righteous and arrogant position with others, or when self-imposed, elicits guilt and shame. This spiritual perfectionism can make you reticent about enjoying the pleasures of the material world, as well as those of your physical body. And beloveds, this is so powerful because a lot of this came up in um, with the with the retrograde and um, with facing the shadow selves and, and so forth. And the fact that it's coming up again, it, it's very powerful. Like I said, there is no spiritual perfectionism. Okay, there is no reaching this spiritual place and saying, aha, I'm there. Evolution is about continually growing and continually leaving room for yourself to grow. And when you come at it from that way, with that understanding, with that understanding, there is no shame and guilt involved. And you can easily forgive yourself for not knowing, for following old patterns, for being human. Okay? Okay. Cardinal. Cardinal direction. Okay. Um... The earth herself provides a dazzling and sensual paranoma, panorama of experiences to be directly encountered through the physical senses. Yet for many, truly enjoying the pleasures of the senses of sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell can be fraught with worry, anxiety, guilt, and shame. Products of early childhood religious and or cultural conditioning. Others become so entangled in the world of the senses that it becomes their God and their spiritual core is lost to material, to material, to materiality. And beloveds, I want you to understand that we become, we become addicted to this God of greed, of consuming, of consumption, of perfection of attaining it, of, of constantly having to be better than somebody or, or beat somebody down or dominate or be superior. To be polarized in one direction or another takes you either to lofty heights and iridescent abstractions that are completely ungrounded or else causes you to become caught up in the glue of the mundane world without the guiding light of spirit to focus a focus of authority with the blessing of your awareness you can direct your thoughts and actions toward that which brings greater <clears throat> excuse me with the blessing of your awareness you can redirect your thoughts and actions toward that which brings greater balance and fluidity between the two polarities, the cardinal associations, courtship, singing, vitality, self-defense, integration, balance, spirituality, fatherhood, harmony, self-expression, confidence, listening, intuition, creativity, responsibility, and colorfulness. Okay, beloved, that's that is going to do it. Um, let's see, I have a couple of okay. Um, I took some some notes, and so I was just just looking. Um, I covered everything. Everything is 
um, again, this is a second portion. Um, if you're wondering why certain things are coming the way they are, please look at the first video. Um, that bears the same title as this one. Also, um, beloveds, in the in the video that didn't that did not make it, um, the Kachina doll had come forth. Those dolls that um, you stack inside of each other. You know, that came about with the, excuse me, the um, understanding of the multiple cells. Just like I say, I have lesions within me, or, or most people can identify with having um, an, inter an inner child, or a God voice, or an angel and a devil voice, or the right or the left voice, or all of these different things. This um, image of the Kachina doll, understand that all of these are inside of the one. And when you have this understanding of yourself, you can better grasp and better find the fluidity, fluidity between the changing of allowing with the breath of what you need to be to step up to change the, the attitude, to change the mood, to change the mode, to change the energy, to manifest the energy that you need to manifest the help that you need. Um, I hope everything was cohesive enough for you. Um, I hope that you get what the spiritual messages that um, Mama had. And there were a lot of them, beloved, just a lot of information. Um, it went on a long time, but this is times are calling for it, beloved. Um, so. I namaste and um, keep your head up, love, and understand that things are unfolding and that you've got to have the patience for them to unfold and fall into place. And the more you work on yourself, the better the world gets, the better the world vibrates, the better the world looks, the more peace of mind you have. The more someone else can't tell you who you are or who you are not. Okay, beloved, be loved and be blessed. And that's going to end the video. This is Mother with Wisdom. Um, you can find me on Facebook as Valerie Ames. You can find me on um, Twitter as Valerie or Motherwit. I just started a Twitter account. Um, you can find me on Blog Talk Radio as um, Motherwit Universal Womb of Wisdom. And I, I believe that's, that's, that's about it. Beloved, um, I'm going to get back being more active um, in using my voice. So you'll be seeing more videos. You'll be seeing more show, radio, blog talk shows. Um, and I'm going to start getting things to together. I have a project that I'm working on that is so huge. And... It really is taking me, sorry, out of my comfort zone. So, just, you'll hear me speaking on it um, later. Okay, beloveds, that's it.